agape family love you god loves you and uh he loves us because we're loved by god we don't have no problems with as long as we stay in his loving arms okay and he's got the answers for any problem that come at us and in other words when you say we don't have a problem meaning meaning this that when you have the the uh insight of what god thinks about you those really are problems those are opportunities so i want to talk teach to you today about god's thoughts toward you and about you god's thoughts toward you and about you so i want to thank you holy spirit that you're going to be teaching through me using me my whole spirit soul and body to teach us this and of course we'll always give jesus the praise and the glory and father god you too thank you for everything that we are so blessed my my we have, we don't know the depths of the blessing but we're doing our best to be taught and learning now out of 1 Corinthians 2.16, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ, but it, we have the mind of Christ potentially. Now, what do you mean by that? It's the mind of Christ as you meditate on the scriptures that's telling you the thoughts that he has towards you and about you. So, so by having God's thoughts, see, you got them. What are you going to do with them? Thinking God's thoughts. I have God's thoughts, you have God's thoughts. Now, by thinking the God's thoughts that you have, uh, does God care about what you think? Does God care about what's going on in the world or in people's lives? Uh, could all those thoughts of God be in the Bible, you know? Because we say things like, um, I don't know what to think of this, go to the Bible. I don't know what God to think about this is going on right now in my life. Whatever it is, you know, good or, or, or persecution or whatever, adversity. Now, does God care about what goes on in the world or in people's lives? Does he care about what's going on in my life? Could all the thoughts of God be in the Bible? Yes. But, but I'm sure of this one thing, I am sure, that there's more thoughts of God that is, that are besides what's in the Bible. <laughs> you can't contain God. <laughs> you know, like a person writing a book on a certain subject, they finish the book, publish it, but then they have more thoughts on the subject. And so they write a, a, maybe a sequel to it, see, or write more books, you know. So, so again, not even, so even though not all of God's thoughts are in this Bible, in our Bibles. Yet everything we need is here. Everything. Every thought I need is here in the Bible. Even though you need it, uh, whatever you need is inside of you. Matthew 6, Seek you first the kingdom of God. Or seek God's way of doing things. So then you put that together with um, Proverbs 23, 7. As a man or woman think is so are they thinking the thoughts of God and acting upon them because that's what God thinks about you and that's what you become is you think and do. So as a man or a woman thinketh, so are they, so then that person will move into the thoughts, watch this, and when with the thoughts of God or disregard the laws, the thoughts of God, and then we lose out on life. Now I say it this way for myself. If God wants to inter interrupt my life and give me further thoughts, that's okay with me. But if, uh, but I guarantee you that it's not that those thoughts will not contradict what's in this Bible. It, it, it'll be in, see. There's the word and the spirit. They agree. L like some people will say, God told me to divorce my spouse and marry this other person. So it's so it, it, it's okay for me to do it. No, it's not good for you to do it. There, there's not there's not thoughts about that in the Bible. Now, watch this. Now let me show you something. There are thoughts that come to me to do certain things. But but then there comes another thought that no, don't do it. <laughs> See, I thought it was good. But then wait a minute. But then I have to, well, what should I do here? 
That's what I say. What What do you got to say about this, Lord? What are your thoughts on this? And then certain scriptures come to me or certain uh, things that happen in the Bible and how the, how the people got over it and made it. Then I'll go with that. So what am I saying to you about God's thoughts toward us and about us? That's telling me that God's thoughts are victorious. They're already right now. They're thought victorious. Not going to be the arm all the time. Everywhere. You can be anywhere. At home, in the car, in another state, on vacation. But God's thoughts are there for you, wherever you're at. And then watch this. Because everywhere I am, God's sending me thoughts. And I can't disregard them. And all his thoughts will produce everything he wants them to produce. Every thought that, that, that I get from God. He said, I'm sending you these thoughts, but they're productive thoughts. They will produce something. Okay, then. Then I got to allow those thoughts, what? To produce in every area of my life. I, I think a lot of times we think we're smarter than God. And we just run out to do something. And then regret it. Because we then we say things like this. I, I would have never thought. That, I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. You weren't. <laughs> You, you were thinking, but not God's thoughts. I, I thought it was going to be all right. I thought it would be this way. See, in other words, I've taken some areas, I've seen some areas in my life that is lacking the provisions of God in my life. Because I read the Bible, I said, I don't have that. That tells me something. That I have not taken his thoughts, which will advise me. See, God will advise you, but he won't make you do it. He's saying, I'm advising you. <laughs> so I'm advising you, he says, so you can prosper in that certain area of your life that because you have some success in it, you think that the, the full extent of how to do what you're doing because you're prosperous, so you don't think there's more depth to it or that you can do it different, see, and get better results. Didn't say the results you were getting were wrong, but you can get better results. You know, but that has never stopped God from accomplishing his work on this earth. <laughs> because in this world, see, the world systems are, a God, are against what God is doing in the church. When I say in the church, I don't mean in the local church, in us, we're the church. But they can't stop him. And then you ask this, okay, well then why are the people of God failing? That includes me in there. Why are the, the people of God failing in so many areas? Hosea 4, 6. There's, there's words that you have to go down and just read. Say, my people. What? My people. What is that? What do you mean my people? He owns us. <laughs> my car. My house. See? My, my, my shoes. My clothes. What is that saying? ownership. So when God says my people which I own <laughs> God said my people, he didn't say the people of the world are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. <laughs> See? So he didn't say not just the down and outers on the earth are destroyed. You know, the, non, the people he doesn't own. He said by my own people. My people are destroyed or consumed or is extinguished. Those that are close to me. Those that I associate with because they don't hold on to what I think about any situation in their life. They're tossed to and fro. By every wind of doctrine, doctrine means teaching. So they're not only tossed to and fro by false doctrine, they're even tossed to and fro by true doctrine or what God thinks about us or lack of knowledge. <laughs> well, I don't know if God heals all the time. I, I don't know if he can protect me from all anything. I don't know. You know, watch what we say. We've got to be smart about this. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> now, so those that are close to me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, 
it, it's not a put down. I'm not putting nobody down. Or we say things like this. Uh, we need to use some wisdom in this. Okay, that's good. I'll, I'll be smart with the thoughts of God, see, because I have to clarify it. I need to be smart about it. And the reason I'm being smart about it because I got God thoughts. And the reason I want to use wisdom concerning anything, so I'm going to use some wisdom in this, meaning I got the thoughts of God. So now I am operating on the smart thoughts of God, and I'm operating on the wisdom thoughts of God. Not wrong to use wisdom. Not wrong to use. I'm not putting that down. I'll never put down knowledge and wisdom because God said, uh, "Get wisdom, and with with wisdom, get get understanding." See, so you need both, right? You got wisdom, but you need knowledge to apply the wisdom. See, okay. Now, now watch this. So my people are destroyed, or consumed, or extinguished. Uh, there are some things that I, I know my sometimes my wife and I say, we're going to do this. And I say, well, now let's be smart about this. Now, what do I mean? My smartness, my intellect, what I think about this? No. Let me see what God says about this. <laughs> what should I do? You know, I don't want to go out there and be foolish because remember what the Bible says, don't tempt the Lord thy God. When Satan came to, Satan came to Jesus, he said, you know, you're God, if you're God's son, throw yourself off this cliff because, you know, you're the son of God and he's, he's going to send angels and lift you up. No, that's not being smart. That's being foolish, you know. So, yeah, use the wisdom and the smartness of God and the thoughts of God and you can do anything on this planet and be protected and never lose your life because you're walking what God thinks about a situation and he'll give you the thoughts toward you so you can function with the mind of Christ and nothing will ever happen to us. All right. Especially in this time with what's going on there, there's a lot of things people are doing. I said, well, I'm going to do this because I don't say, well, no, what's your faith? No, because there's faith, foolishness, and presumption. So whatever they're doing is they're operating according to their faith, according to what God's telling them. And who am I? to disrespect what God's telling them. See, I respect you. Whatever you think about a situation, I'll say, okay, that, that, that's great. I respect you because you're not a little kid. I respect what you're doing. So I'll never put down anybody by, by saying, well, I, you know, where's your faith? It's not about faith only. <laughs> you got you to gotta have faith, but you got to have wisdom with your faith, you know? You, you, your faith is developed through thought, through wisdom, through knowledge. See, so just make sure that uh, you don't just say faith, faith alone. There's wisdom with faith, knowledge. There's uh, there, there there's a the meditation. There's patience with faith. It's not just a blank faith, and that's it. And disregard everything that makes that faith uh, the faith of God, and and uh, which will contain the things that you need to to be able to have. So, so, so those that are close to me, God is saying this, watch it. Those that are close to me, those that I associate with, see, because some people don't hold on to what God is telling them about this, see. They're not spending time meditating on my thoughts, mm -hmm. which I put in my word for them. So here, I have to go to the word because I'm meditating and I'm I'm going to do this and do that. And it might be contrary to what this person is doing or these person are doing. But I know that I know because of my relationship, I'm going to do it. Same thing with a person. Their meditation, they're spending time with God. And, and they're getting the thoughts on God on this. And so I say, why aren't you doing this like they are? And they say, well, because I'm just obeying God. See, I have to respect that. I have to respect that their meditation, their spending time, they have a relationship with God just like I do. And so based on their relationship, see, and their walk with God, sitting on God's lap, in daddy's lap, that's why they're going to function the way they're functioning. And who am I to say that's, you ought to, you ought to be like me. No, be like Jesus and we're on safe ground. So, See how I'm incorporating that God's thoughts toward you and I? 
God's thoughts about me, they're here in the Bible. See? So God says this, those that are close to me, those that I associate with, because they don't hold on to what I think, they're not spending their time meditating on my thoughts, which I put in my word. So then that's why people go off on wild tangents and quit their ministry, quit their jobs, leave their families to marry somebody else. Listen, that happens every day. Why does this happen? Because some people get tired and bored and they quit spending time in the word of God. They quit fellowshipping with God. It, when you read Psalms 119, verse 42, the word exposes any seeds of falsehood that have entered into your life. The word does. And the word of God unleashes God's faith. Faith is confidence in the word of God. See? So when I say I have faith in, in confidence in the word of God, I'll say things like this. Me and my wife, or somebody asks me, what am I doing? I say, well, here's the smart thing to do right now. Now, why, why am I basing, what am I saying, here's the smart thing for me to do? What I'm really saying, I have confidence in my relationship with God. And I'm, when I say I'm, I'm, um, the smart thing for me to do with this right now, what I'm saying, I have faith in the thoughts of God. I have faith in what God thinks about me. And so, on my, so now I'm thinking of this, and I got this thought. And after meditating, here's the smart thing to do. See that? See that? That's personal between you and God. See, you're confident. This is the confidence that we have. See, this is the faith that overcomes the world system. So faith is confidence in God. And faith comes when the word of God enters into your heart. See, when the, when the word of God enters into your heart. And then Psalm 115 one, in verse 165 says this, great peace, not just peace, great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Emotional wounds happen, offenses are going to happen. See, the word of God is a shield, and it enables you to see the attacks of others as opportunities rather than obstacles. The word of God is a shield enables you to see the attacks of others as opportunities rather than obstacles. All this is happening is an opportunity for me to get the thoughts of God for myself and get and to get when I get the thoughts of God, the mind of Christ, then I know how to think concerning what's going on in my life because what's going on out there, you know. So the word of God is a shield and enables you to see the attacks of others as opportunities rather than obstacles. Now watch this, Proverbs 3, 21 and 23. When you read that, that Proverbs, see the word of God enables you to make wise decisions. Hallelujah. So keep sound wisdom, see? Then thou shalt walk in thy safely. He said, keep sound wisdom, that's God, then thou shalt walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. See? So it's not just a statement that I'm saying when I talk to people, and, and, I, and I always talk to people in love. I said, use wisdom in this, okay? You, you Use wisdom. So I'm saying, I'm coming out of Proverbs 321. When I say, be smart about this decision, be smart about what you're going to do. I'm, I'm talking about their safety. I'm not criticizing them. I'm talking about them being able to walk safely that their foot shall not stumble. Then Psalm 119 and verse 11 says this, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. What did we say sin was? Missing the mark. So I could say it this way, the, your word have I hid in my heart that I won't miss the mark of what I should be doing in my life right now. So, so the word that I have to hide is I have to go meditate. I have to see your God's thoughts. And then when I get God's thoughts in his word, I hide it 
meaning I put it in the in my heart so when something comes up, I know what to do right there and then because the Spirit of God would lead me and say, remember that meditation? Remember that when you were studying that? That's what you need to do. Now, now let me say the opposite of that because everything there's a positive, there's a negative. People get tired of God's word and then they begin to listen to voices instead of listening and understanding God's thoughts. We're dealing about God's, sort, God's thoughts towards us and about us. As people leave the word of God. But here's what Jeremiah says. Let's not be led astray by not, by not studying and meditating. Jeremiah 29, 11, remember he says, I know, my thought, I know my thoughts toward you. I have good plans for you. Plans to prosper for an, for, for an accepted end, for a prosperous end, for a victorious end. These thoughts are to bring us to a point in life where if a person looks at us, they're convinced that we've been with Jesus. <laughs> in, in other words, you won't deny what they're saying. They can't deny what they're, when you tell them something, they can't deny when I say something to it. Why? Because they see your lifestyle. Okay? In other words, this, why is this? You're, you're, you will prove what your thoughts are by the words that proceed out of your mouth. Thinking and speaking results. Thinking, thoughts, speaking, acting, results. When, when God says in, in there in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, where we're to renew our mind, we come to God and say, God says, Paul is begging us, he says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your present your mind. Uh, why is he telling me? I got it. When God said, when Paul said, by the mercies of God, I said, wow, God's asking something about me. God's asking something of me. He's loving me. He wants me to renew, renew my mind, to take his thoughts about what he's saying about my life because his thoughts are better than mine, right? Isaiah 55, 11 says, uh, 8 through 11, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not yours, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways in yours. So then, uh, do I really believe it? Does, do I really mean, okay, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and renew my mind. I must live like I really mean then I'm going to do Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Because then there's proof that I really mean it, not only to people can see it, but to myself, a peace that passes all understanding. What, am, what are we saying here so far? I must allow God to change my way of thinking. Glory to God. Now there's going to be some time of discipline, of developing and preparation. In other words, you don't just change your way of thinking overnight. And that's why you have to, it's got to be line upon line, precept upon precepts. So we can get our mind strong, so we can get our spirit strong. Why? To handle the pressures and stress that comes up, you know, in our lives. That's what I do. I said, uh, Lord, I want your thoughts. He'll give me the thought, but still... I have to develop. I have to meditate on those things because there's pressures that are going to come against me and there's pains in life. There's hard times coming in my life. So how do I do that? How can I be successful in my thought life? That's a big thing here. Notice that thought life. I have to know the will of God for my life. So then I must meditate on the Word of God day and night. I have to saturate my mind with this book where it becomes the number one priority in my life. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things, these things, these thoughts, see, will be added unto you. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Seek his way of doing things. How do I do things? By his thoughts. <laughs> What's on his mind? See, when God sees, when God sees that, uh, when, when God begins to see that I'm doing this, 
Then he'll begin to speak to me in line with the Bible. <laughs> when we begin to do this, then God begins to speak to us in line with the word. When God sees that I'm doing that, see, because if I don't know how God operates, then I don't know his laws and principles. What do I got to be doing in this season, you know, in, in, in 2020? How, how do I handle this season? Because I've never experienced this stuff before. My God, it, 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 to my earthly mind, it, it baffles me. So I have to go to the mind of Christ and say, Lord, how do I handle this? I don't know how. I don't know how to answer people. I don't know how to handle when something happens and the person asks, Pastor, what should I do here? Or what advice do you give me? Uh, Lord, I, I need some help. So again, let me say this. If I don't know how he operates, I can't tell you how to operate. If I don't know his principles, then I can't tell you what to do. Be it far from me to tell you to do exactly as I say. I will never do that. I would always tell you, do exactly as God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit speak to you based on your relationship see, with him and your understanding of your Lord and Savior. See, let me show you what I'm, I'm trying to build a contrast here or build an example. I wouldn't go to a person and say, give my car a tune-up if he's not mechanically inclined. Or tell a, that same person, I have a room in my house and I want to enlarge it and I want a special type of window in it if that person doesn't know anything about carpentry. And why would he expect people to be calling him to do this kind of work on their homes and cars. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, in the same way, I can expect God to come to me all the time and tell me to do this or do this for him. No. When God speaks to his people, he speaks to them in their hearts and it'll be in line with the word of God. They just, God doesn't just come out of the blue and say, he didn't just come out of the blue and say, Oh, okay, you know what? I'm calling you into the ministry. So get you a Bible and go out into the ministry. No. He's going to have to show me in his word how to do it. See? And he knows how to do it. So I go to the Bible and see how he's called many people into the ministry. And he's taught them how. He's taught them what to do. And they're successful. See? So I'm going to listen to him. He's going to tell me what to do, but he's going to instruct me what to do. See, you can get the thoughts of God for your life from the Bible. But once you get those thoughts, then you must not allow, allow anyone to change your mind concerning those thoughts. See, don't allow anybody. If you do this, <laughs> your life will be one of success in Christ. If I get the mind of Christ, and if I say, if I say to the Lord, What's your thoughts on this? What do you think about this situation? And he'll always lead you to the word. So when God tells you to do something, he's going to teach you how to do it. Or he's saying, listen, I know how, I know, I know how to start this, and I know the outcome. I'm the author and finisher of whatever I tell you to do, if you've got my thoughts. So when you get into this book and study it and meditate on it, spend some quiet time in the presence of God, concerning what you're meditating. Now then, watch this. Then God speaks to you and he gives you some instruction. The instruction gives you direction to a certain situation in your life. Now from that point on, stay with those thoughts. From that point on, stay with those thoughts. Don't be moved by anyone. I mean, don't allow nobody to change your mind about what God has already told you to do. Because you already know what God thinks about you in your life and concerning the situation. Okay, now I said all that to say this, you are more than a conqueror. You're a new creation. You walk by faith, not by sight. You're the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Because you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. See, he knows. 
And uh, he knows that I've given up my ways and taken his thoughts. And he knows I'm renewing my mind with his thoughts. And I'm being transferred every day to know the good, the acceptable, and perfect will of God. Oh, those are good thoughts, huh? I'm going to say that again. God has good thoughts for you. What are those? God says, God says to you and I, you're more than a conqueror. You're a new creation. I'm getting those thoughts from God, from studying. You walk by faith, not by sight. You're the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. James 1, 22 and 23, as you study that, see, it tells you I'm, you and I are greatly blessed. But if I'm not greatly blessed in my needs, it's not God that's holding back his promises. It's for lack of knowledge. Or that God has changed his mind about certain things in my life that he's spoken to me about here. No, it's because I don't know his thoughts, his ways. I don't know his will for me. Not sin. It's just I don't know. See? That's why he said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That's why he said, thou will keep him in perfect mind, peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Whose thoughts? I'm going to keep your thoughts in you. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. No weapon for and against me shall prosper. I'm going to do this because I'm more than a conqueror. I, I'm thinking about doing this because I know I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I know I'm going to do this endeavor here. I, I'd rather I'm going to do this here because my God's going to supply and I won't lack in this supply, not only supplying the finances, the people, but supplying me the wisdom and the knowledge, the understanding, doors of opportunity, closing doors. Those are the thoughts that I have, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and venture in this, which I've never done before, but I got the thoughts of God, and I'm going to go in this, and it's going to be all right. God will never tell you to get into something that's going to hurt us. God will never say, do this without telling you day by day how to do it. Not all in one shot in one day, but daily, progressive revelation, line upon line, precept upon precept, here, there, and that a little, you know. Adjustment here and adjustment there. Go over there, don't go over there, talk with that person. Can you see that? See, I'm living my life, if I'm not careful, and I don't know his will for me, I don't know his will for me, then what I'll be doing is this, me, personally. I'm living my life by my opinion and my assumptions and my ideas. So now what's, what am I saying? Well, my ways and my thoughts are lower than his thoughts. And that's why I'm not making it. That's why I'm unsuccessful in my life, in my career, my job, in the ministry. Because see, we want to do better today than we were, than we did yesterday. I do. I want I want to go from glory to glory. I want to look more like Jesus in my accomplishments, in my actions. I want to achieve many things to become better, to exceed, to surpass. Because excellence is a state of being. It's part of a person of who I am. Excellent is a state of being. Excellent is a part of who I am, part of who you are. It's a quality that you can see in a person. That's why we're making it an Agape Faith Fellowship, because of the great leadership that we have there, because of the people that are doing, and they know why they're doing, why the purpose, and that's why Agape has, has keeps developing and keeps exceeding and keeps getting better and better, because we're finding out the thoughts of God on what to do in any situation, see? It's not me, but it's all of us there putting our wisdom and knowledge and our thoughts together, getting the mind of Christ for the ministry, see? See? Now, in other words, we are always pressing and pushing toward excellence at agape. We're pushing to higher ground. In other words, I'm like this. I ask myself every day, every day, what can I do to reach 
beyond what I am today. It, 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 now, when I say everything that I'm saying about excellence and pushing forward and growing and developing, is this road an easy road? Oh, no. It's not easy. But see, a person of excellence is to be driven to pursue excellence every moment. Every moment. How? By by getting the will of God for what we're doing. <laughs> See, I I, I want to push forward. I want to go into everything at Agape be better every day. Every week should be better to all personally our lives, our children, our grandchildren, our ministry, our job, our career. See, in every department. See, now, we will never attain perfection in this life because when we are saved, that's why I tell people, I don't know everything. That's why sometimes I'll call people up, I'll call my leaders and, and talk to them and I ask them, what, what do you think about this? Uh, what do you say about what's being done in the, this situation that's happening out there, this, this, this uh, attack on our lives, on our health? And, all over the world, but what, what, what is God saying to you about this? How are you handling it? Uh, give me some insight of how you're handling it. Why would you do that, Pastor, if you're the pastor of a copy paste fellowship? Yeah, but I don't know everything. And, and I got people that, that got excellence in their life, so I call and talk to them. So let me say that. this We will never attain perfection in this life because when we were saved, our minds and our bodies didn't get saved. And they will give us trouble <laughs> and, and bring us back into the five sense realm that will cause us not to walk by faith and we'll be walking by sight. But notice Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you. Okay, what he said, I got some thoughts on you, what to do here. But but see, but you have to keep going beyond Jeremiah 29, 11. Go to 12 and 13, Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13, because he says this, you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Notice I said, look what he said, when you seek me, with all your heart. What's that saying? Philippians 4.13. Uh, I, I have to realize I must press in so I can realize God's best for our lives. I got to press in. And that's why I say in a multitude of counter, there's safety. I, I spend a lot of time in, in, um, in the Bible, but on the phone. I had to, when all this situation came up, because I have people saying this and saying that, and, and, and I need to do this, and I'm going to leave, or whatever. And, and, and so I, I had to call. I called people that ordained me, and I said, listen, what would you do if, if a person said this to you? How do you handle it? And then they tell me, he said, here's what I would do. Here's how what I would handle it. And then I come back, you know, and hang up on the phone. Then I meditate and I said, Lord, what do you say? He said, yeah. That, that's wisdom in what they were saying. What is it? We get back to what? what? I'm going to be smart about this situation. Why? Because I got the thoughts of God from other people, not just myself. Because I can miss it. I can be in a gray area. But thank God those people that licensed me and ordained me, oh, glory, I can call them and ask them, what do you do? I'm on the phone a, a lot. <laughs> Why? Because I don't know a lot. <laughs> I'm on the phone. I want to make sure that when somebody asks me something, I don't put him in harm's way. <laughs> I put him in the way of Jesus, <laughs> the way, the truth, and the light. So, it, 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 see, so I got to press in. So I can realize God's best. In other words, early in the morning when you wake up, what's on your mind? Your thoughts could be, how can I excel? 
How can I get closer to my place of excellence than I was yesterday? So take the step forward and then now say from your heart and with your mouth in the presence of the Godhead, Jesus, Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and say, I decree I'll never look back. I'm not going to look back. I'm not ever going to go back. Never, never. I'm going forward from now on with your thoughts. I'm going to be thinking like you. So these thoughts of you, that's what I'm going forward, see? Now, I, I, you, I'll, I'll be challenged. You'll be challenged. But don't quit. Refuse to go back. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Isaiah 26.3. See, we have here a man here in Isaiah 26.3 who God is controlling his mind. He's not allowing his thoughts to run wild and affect him. He's got his mind stayed on God. He isn't feeling sorry for himself. He isn't saying, well, nobody loves me or listens to me. Those are empty words of the devil. They are vain thoughts. They are vain imaginations of the devil. We must not entertain them. Because if we do, we will destroy our lives and our God-given dreams and fear and defeat into our life. We're not going to be able to worship God in spirit and truth. And he will not be able to communicate with us. And we with him. Why? Because we're not listening. That's why I, I love this scripture. And, and, and you know it. Hebrews 4.16. Come boldly to the throne. I didn't know this, what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I used to hear that, and I used to teach it and preach it. But since then, I've come to do some um, correction in my teaching. It said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Well, here's what I, I didn't know. I used to say, come boldly to the throne of grace, and then just begin asking God for something. Be, begin petitioning God. And then, as my meditation and study, came to say, why would I go boldly to the throne of grace? No, not to ask him for something, not to petition him for it, not to plead for something, not for him to get me out of this and get me out of that. No, I would go boldly to the throne of grace to worship and praise him for the great life that I'm having because I, I start getting his thoughts on my life, on my way of doing, my way of going, my way of speaking. See? Then I, would, I couldn't wait to get to, to the throne to say, I'm not going to ask you for nothing. I'm not here to petition you for this or for that, to straighten this person out or straighten this out or straighten. Yeah, no, I'm coming to tell you, thank you. <laughs> See, that changed. My thoughts about that scripture changed my life, my attitude towards me and people and how to treat people and how to talk to people that they're not mine. They belong to God. God owns them. They're his people. So I have to learn how to talk to people that God loves and died for unconditionally. I must learn how to interact with them. And thank God, I'm not petitioning God for nothing anymore. No I'm just going and thanking him for the wisdom in the thoughts toward me and about me, in the thoughts about his people. See, what he thinks of them, then I gotta think of them <laughs> too, see? So we're to walk boldly into the throne of grace and fellowship, not just petition, petition, petition. <laughs> like, you know, you, you get this, you hear, my name is Jimmy, my name is Jimmy, gimme, give gimme. Give my middle name is more, 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 gimme more, gimme more. My name is Jimmy, gimme, give gimme. Give my middle name's more, 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 more. No. Just get on his lap. You know that praying is kissing the face of God? That's the meaning of prayer. Wait, when you study that. Praying is kissing the face of God. Oh, to get spiritually minded. We got to have a revelation of his word for our personal life. Because, see, this is one of the meanings, not the only meaning, 
Revelation is this transfer of knowledge from the spirit to the soul. So then you can act upon it that Jesus may be glorified. So I got revelation. It's the transfer of knowledge <laughs> from the spirit, from my spirit, to the soul, to the mind. I can act upon it to make me look good. No, to have Jesus be glorified. Because see, if Satan is continually controlling my mind with fears and frustrations and disappointment and hurts and insecurities, well, if I'm, I saw I'm hearing those voices, I'll never be able to hear from the Spirit of God to help me or help agape or help people, anybody, not just agape. If that happens to me, that I'm, I'm continually allowing the devil to control my mind with fear, frustration, disappointment, and hurt, then my life will be like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> what do you mean? Up and down, up and down, up and down. Up one day, down the next day. On fire one day for God, cold the next day. The joy of the Lord just oozing out of me. But then next time I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to say hi to nobody. Somebody asked me something and I just blurt out, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Mm -mm. But I must rebuke the enemy whenever confusion hits our minds. John 14, 27, I'll stop with this. He said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. N not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> I like that. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were so, I wouldn't have said it to you. So I got to read that and receive this. Spend time on his lap kissing him, not petitioning him, but just hugging on him and thanking him. In these later years of my life, with myself and him and ministry, I had to do a lot of attitude adjustment. And out of that attitude adjustment, I'm learning about gratitude. Now I'm not thinking about what to get. I'm thanking God for what I do have from him. Not what I'm going to get, not what I need, not what I must have, but what do I have now? You know what I have now? You, you do too. Eternal life. The joy of the Lord. Mansion in heaven. Name written in the land book of life. Right now, <laughs> we're going to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're, we're going to miss the tribulation. Wow. We're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We have that already. It's a done deal. Hmm. Are you done being uh, readjust, uh, readjusting your... No! I know there's more coming, but I'm enjoying what I have right now. Boy. It, it, what I'm saying, it took me a long time because of my stubbornness. And, and I'm letting you know this. It doesn't have to take you as long as it took me. <laughs> I'm working on me. <laughs> With God's thoughts towards me and about me. Agape, when I say this, I'm not, I'm coming out of my heart and the Holy Ghost is in me as a witness. I am a very happy pastor. I am. I'm enjoying the vision and the ministry. I love study and I love to get the thoughts. Agape, God loves us. That's the most important thing. And he loves us unconditionally. You're looking at a happy pastor because I got a happy, con I got a great congregation. And I'm talking out of my heart right now. All through this I've been talking. I'm letting you know. I brag on, on a copy a lot. Really do. 
And that's why I'll never retire. <laughs> I'm refiring every morning and every time I get in Sunday, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Do you get tired? My body does. But it's worth it for the anointing and the compassion and the love of God that I, comes upon me and that it is just oozing out from everybody at Agape. Can't wait to see you Sunday, but I will love you. Have a great day today. Remember, enjoy what you do have today and get the thoughts of God towards you and about you. God loves you, Agape. I love you.